In the PBC world, we're always looking for ways to get more information about our competitors. And while you can pay for some pretty expensive tools that are valuable, why not start with something that's free? I'm talking about the Google Ads Auction Insights Report. That report will show you how your account is doing compared to other accounts that are showing up in the same auctions. So in this video, we're gonna show you where this report lives, the information we can pull for this report, and how you can use that information to make better optimization decisions. The first thing I wanna talk about is where to find auction insights. So I just opened up a new account and I'm sitting just within the main overview section. Auction insights reports are available for search campaigns or shopping campaigns. And we see in this account, they don't have shopping campaigns. So I'm just gonna focus right on search. For search campaigns, auction insight reports will live at three different levels. The highest level is gonna be campaigns. So if we click on the campaign section, underneath your campaign breakdown, you'll see auction insights. The second level will be ad groups. There we see auction insights again. And then the deepest level will be keywords. Since your keyword reports have a few different other options like negative keywords and search terms, auction insights will still be there. It'll just live at the bottom. But I'm gonna head back up to campaigns and then we'll run through the metrics that we can see within an auction insights report. And what we see in this view are the main columns. And the columns that we see in this insight report are what we're gonna get. And what I mean by that is if I go to columns, I can only take certain columns away. Our display URL domain, AKA the competitors, are gonna be locked in there, but there aren't any additional columns that we can add. So I can just go ahead and cancel out of this, and then I'm gonna move back up so we can talk about each of the columns. So I wanted to blur out some of the other domains, just because if I showed you them, there's a decent chance you could guess which account this is. So the one that I did not blur out that says you is this account. It's us. The Auction Insights Report will show where we stand compared to other accounts that are showing up for the same search terms that we are targeting within this particular campaign. Again, I am at the campaign level. We have to think of it now, not from a specific keyword level because match types have changed so many times that what we're targeting isn't always exactly what the user is searching for. So this comparative analysis is more looking at how many times you're showing up within the same auction. Don't look at this as a direct one-to-one -one keyword level bid, no matter what level you're using to analyze your auction insights. So the competition column, the display URL domain, that's pretty straightforward. Now let's go over each of the other columns. The first is impression share. The amount of impressions we did get divided by the estimated number of impressions we were eligible to receive. We have to stress eligible to receive. We're not talking about every single possible impression because it all comes down to your target settings. Are you negating or excluding certain components of your campaign or ad group? Were certain keywords or ads disapprove? Did your quality score change? There's a variety of different factors within there. Now I am on a search campaign, so if you're using shopping, shopping doesn't have a quality score. So there's gonna be different factors between shopping and search. Also, impression share is just gonna be from your account's point of view. So from this view, our impression share is 21.39%. Our top competitor at 26.11% is only from when we're showing up within the same auctions as them. That top competitor could be available for everything. So they might actually see 100% when we're only seeing 26.11 for that competitor. That is because your competition most likely has different keyword targets. They have different targeting settings within their campaign or ad group settings. So it's a good way to just focus on what you're doing and use this information as insights of how they're competing with your current targets, not the entire landscape that's out there. And if we look at the bottom four for impression share, we see it's below 10%. In any column within Auction Insights, the report will not show you the exact number when it's less than 10%. Next, we have overlap rate. And that is how often a competitor's ad received an impression when your account's ad also received an impression. It makes sense, we can't overlap ourselves. So that metric is blank for our row, but let's look at the top competitor again, the one right above us. Let's say our ad had 100 impressions. That means out of 100 impressions of that top competitor, they were showing up 23, 24 out of those 100 times. Next, I'm gonna skip all the way to the right and look at outranking share, and I'm doing this for a very specific reason. An outranking share is the number of times the ad in your account was ranking higher than a competitor's ad. And sometimes that means when only you showed up and your competitor wasn't there at all when you were eligible within the same auction. Now to explain why I showed you these three columns first, I'm gonna hop into a different account. Now if you look in the gray bar at the top, you will see I'm looking at shopping campaigns. And instead of the display URL, we see the store display name, different than a search setup. So after the store display name, we see there's only three columns. If I go to the column section to try to add more, we don't get any. So impression share, overlap rate, 
and outranking share are the only columns we get for both search and shopping auction insights. And if we're looking at auction insight reports for shopping campaigns, this information will only come from the appearance on the search network. We know shopping is appearing in more places now. YouTube is a good example. So not all that information will apply here, but I'm gonna hop back into that other account so we can look at the three remaining columns. Next, we have position above rate. Another metric that's blank for your own account because position above rate is showing how often the competitor's ad was put in a higher position than your own. And both of them have to be showing up at the same time. See how that's different than outranking share? Because the competitor's ad does not have to be showing up for outranking share. So there's a few little nuances, but there are clear differences. Next is top of page rate, showing how often your ad was showing anywhere above the organic results. And that's very similar to the next one, absolute top of page rate. And that's when your ad was number one, both above the organic results and the number one ad position. So as you're going through the campaign ad group or keyword level, we already mentioned that we can't change the columns. We can only get rid of certain ones if you only wanna look at some specific set of data. But what we can do is add certain filters. Technically, this is almost like an account level view. I'm not on any specific account, I'm just on the overall search campaigns listing. So I could go down and select campaign, choose the combination that I want and apply that. I canceled out, but that's just one example. So maybe I wanna look at all of my non-branded campaigns because I can't filter by a specific label, I would have to check all of those. And that's one decent strategy that we like to use for auction insights. Looking at how many people are actually bidding on your brand name. This could help adjust your bidding strategy. Why? Because if we go down to segment, we can even look at time. Are your competitors really trying to go after your brand potentially just during work hours? Is it actually 24 hours a day? Is it just during the main weekdays? Or is it literally every hour of the day, all year? So you can split up that information at each of the levels. You can also segment by device, and this one I'll actually click on. If there's one competitor you really wanna focus on, are they outperforming you or potentially hurting your performance just on particular devices? So you don't have to go and adjust everything, just the components where you need to improve. I'm gonna clear this one out and go to a different level. I'm at a keyword level auction insights here, and you can select a specific campaign and ad group before you choose the keyword level. Sometimes we like to get this specific when looking at if we're bidding on the right keywords. Even though nowadays I am combining my exact and phrase match within one ad group, I still like to keep the theme of that ad group pretty tight. So if I know my theme is tight and I still wanna see who is showing up within the auction alongside my client's ad, I'm gonna see if I'm focusing on the right keywords. In this view, if I'm noticing that a majority or all six of the competitors really aren't what we consider competitors, I'm probably not bidding on the best keywords. So I'm either gonna start getting a bunch of clicks from people who will never want my product or service, or I'm really gonna have to change my ad copy to try to pre-qualify users, thus hurting my click-through rate because I don't want unqualified people to click my ads. I would still look at conversion volume as well as conversion quality before deciding to turn something off. But if you are getting poor quality or no conversion actions, look to see if this is the right fit. If not, it gives you a good idea that you need to go out and start researching new keywords. Or if you already think you're maxing out the keyword opportunity, pause this campaign and start building some awareness either through Google or another channel to start driving more interest to the right keywords. And one last thing I like to do from this information is start collecting all the list of competitors. And you can do it at whatever level you want. Collect every single one showing up in all your campaigns or you can segment that information to just a group or theme that you want that is important to you. But take that list of competitors and maybe use a tool like SEMrush or SpyFu and see what other keywords they're bidding on. I like to do this if I'm seeing the same competitor showing up in a majority or all of my ad groups. Maybe they found some other keywords that I haven't thought of yet, I haven't tested out yet. Let's see what they're showing up on in other search results pages, thanks to these third-party tools, and then give me new ideas of what I can potentially test. There are always gonna be grain of salts when looking at these numbers. Because as I said before, this is looking at your specific point of view. It's not telling you exactly what the client sees in their account. But the auction insights reports are still very cool to look at your campaign, ad group, and keyword level competition to get a basic understanding of where you stand compared to other accounts within the same auctions. If you haven't checked out this report yet, most likely you will find certain gaps where you can improve. Get the information to find out why you're not showing up as high why a particular ad group or set of keywords aren't performing that well. How come your best performing keywords aren't showing up as much as you think they should be? Play around with the different levels, use some of the filters and segmentations so you can start making the right adjustments for your bid strategies and your overall account performance.
Thanks for watching our video. If you found it useful, give us a thumbs up below. We release a new video at least once a week, so if you want to see more from the Paid Media Pros channel, be sure to subscribe.